safety, cleanliness, and accuracy are three fundamental factors in all machine shop work. The careful operator swings the arm out of the way while cleaning the table of nicks, burrs, and chips. The work itself must also be clean to ensure accuracy. Notice how carefully the operator places the casting on the table to avoid bruising either the table or the work. The engineer who designs the machine uses the drawing to give the necessary shapes and dimensions to the machine operator. Every part of the machine is related to and must fit some other part. The machine operator must observe the fundamental law of all machine tool operations. Follow the drawing at all times. Each tool in its place speeds production. The right jig for the job is checked by measuring the diameter and the number of holes of the bolt circle. Jigs are used to ensure accuracy and increased production. A good setup is half the job. The wooden heel blocks must be level with the top surface of the jig. Otherwise, the clamps may throw the jig out of place when pulled down hard. To carry the load properly, the washers under each knot must be larger than the openings in the clamps, and the threads on each bolt must extend below the tops of the clamps. The center marks at each end of the jig and on the sides must line up with the reference marks on the piece. Notice that the operator loosens the arm clamps before he raises the arm. Otherwise, serious damage to the machine might result. It is important that the lever which engages the gears that operate the elevating screw be held firmly in place. It is always safer to use a friction chuck when tapping blind holes. To insert the chuck in the spindle, line up the tang on the tapered shank with the slot cut in the spindle, then drive the chuck upward with a quick motion. The size of the tap drill is important and should be obtained from a table of tap drill sizes. When drilling tap holes in tough metals, it is often necessary to use a drill 1 64th larger than the size shown on the table. 
the drill must be lined up with the hole in the jig. A loose bushing is used in this jig. This bushing can be used conveniently to show when the drill is lined up with the hole in the jig. Notice how the operator uses the bushing for this purpose. The head is clamped to the rail. The column is clamped to the base. The motor started. The arm is clamped to the column. A chart of feeds and speeds located on the machine is a convenient guide for the operator. In this case, the speed of the drill is 333 RPM. And the feed is seven thousandths per revolution. The drawing calls for a hole depth of seven eighths. When drilling a blind tap hole, never break through. The competent operator always feeds the drill to the work slowly when starting a hole. The automatic stop disengages at the end of the stroke and the depth of hole must therefore be figured from that point when setting the stop. The operator has completed the setup. He knows the holes will come to the correct depth, and he now proceeds with confidence to the actual job of drilling. The operator can tell by the sound of the machine that it is running smoothly. The drilling has been completed, and the job must now be set up for tapping. Now that the jig has been removed, a piece of metal, the same thickness as the jig, must be placed under each clamp to keep the clamps level. Each hole must be carefully cleared of chips. This is commonly done with a piece of magnetized steel kept for the purpose.
Every standard size tap comes in sets of three different shapes. This is a number two, a shape always used for machine tapping. A friction chuck such as this is often used when tapping blind holes to prevent breaking the tap when it strikes the bottom of the hole. It is necessary that the friction discs in the chuck be adjusted so that they will carry the normal load on the tap but will not pull the tap hard enough to break it. The tap must be centered over the hole before it enters the hole. When tapping a hole, the V-shaped cutting edges of the tap form the thread by gradually cutting into the metal. As the cutting progresses, the metal builds up, thus putting additional load on the cutting edges of the tap. As the load increases, the friction chuck stops the tap. The load is released by turning the tap half a turn backward. This cuts off the accumulated metal and allows the tapping to proceed. These chips accumulate in the bottom of the hole and must be removed to permit the tap to go down all the way. The operator must keep the spindle pulled down against the tap since the tap is loose in the chuck and will otherwise pull out. The automatic feed must not be engaged. When backing the tap out, the weight of the spindle should be taken off the tap. Since the piece is to be turned over for drilling on the opposite side and will rest on the drilled surface, the burrs must be removed. The piece is now turned over and reset for drilling using the same procedures that were followed when setting up and drilling the first side.